the 11. This is Face the State with Dennis Howe, Connecticut's most watched local political program. A good Sunday morning to you and thanks for joining us. We begin with a Channel 3 Face the State exclusive with Linda McMahon and Chris Shays poised to enter the Republican race for the U.S. Senate. There is now another Republican joining that field regarded as one of the rising stars in the state Republican Party. He is the Mayor of Vernon. Jason McCoy. Mayor McCoy, good to see you on the program. How are you, Dennis? Good to see you. So it's now official. You want to become a U.S. Senator. Tell me why. I absolutely want to become a U.S. Senator. You know, Dennis, um, this is probably one of the most critical races in the U.S. history. We're facing an ap ap absolute economic disaster. And, and I'm, not, I'm not overstating that. Um, the debt and the borrowing and all, all that's been going on in Washington is completely overwhelming. Um, what they've been doing in Congress and the U.S. Senate, they've been doing everything wrong. And they've just made it worse. They've, they've spent and borrowed, and the bubble's going to burst. Um, they can't borrow more, and they can't spend more. And what we need to do is have a change. We need to do absolutely the reverse of what they're doing. We need to reduce spending. We need to cut taxes. We need to stop borrowing. We need to control the government. Things are, are really, really not working out well. What led you to this decision? You've been running May, uh, Vernon for four years, doing the, on the municipal level. Now you want to do the state level, on the federal level, that is. You know, well, let me, let me say, how could you... We, we've, we've done a lot of things in the town of Vernon that translate across the country. We reduce spending, we cut taxes, we've uh, controlled the size and growth of government. Uh, they need to start doing that. And, and how could they possibly do that if, if they can't even get a budget together? I've done a budget for four years. These people haven't, in Washington, D.C., haven't done a budget in 870 days. Let's walk us through the Democrats so far. We have Chris Murphy, Susan Bicewitz, William Tong. What do you think of that field? Uh, I, I think that the problem of those candidates is they're the same old, same old. They're, they're you know, big government status. That's all they are. And what about the Republicans that you will likely face in this race? First of all, Linda McMahon is going to come in. She's got a lot of money behind her, uh, her own personal fortune, of course. You know, some people say she's the giant in this race. How do you overtake her? Well, look, I, I think people are, Linda's a very nice person. Uh, the other people who are interested in running the U.S. Senate, they're certainly nice people, and they're probably committed to the country. However, we need, we need a complete change. We need people that understand funding, financing, uh, controlling spending and stop, you know, overtaxing and overregulating every part of the economy. You know, a couple of years ago, uh, I was put on a committee on how to reduce, or we were asked to cut municipal spending on, on ourselves. I was one of the only mayors that had voted to reduce the spending. We came out with 131 unfunded mandates on the municipalities. It's the same thing for businesses. The reason why jobs in the economy are so bad right now is because of the complete overregulation. You hear about these these things for municipalities, but it's just as bad for businesses. They can't hire people because it costs so much to hire each individual person because they're they're regulated on every aspect of business. When you told Linda McMahon that you were thinking of running for the Senate, what did she say? Uh, you know, she was very friendly. She was very friendly about it. We we talked for a little while. She's a, I, I've known her for uh, for quite some time now. I support her in the last race. I, you know, frankly, you know, in, in the last race, she lost by over 100,000 votes. Um, I don't think that at that time, you know, she was perfect for Connecticut. I think that you need somebody maybe that a little bit younger, a little bit more enthusiastic, and then that understands, you know, the electorate, politics, and policy, and how to implement those things, and how, uh, you know, we can make sure, that, you know, there's a balance between government and the private industry, and I have that experience. She, you know, frankly, she doesn't really have that experience. What about Chris Shays, who does have the experience in government? Well, he has the experience in government. And, and that's... He, he's, been, he's been a legislator. Uh, I, you know, I have a lot of respect for Congressman Shays, but uh, some of the policies that, you know, go back 20 years, he, you know, he's been involved with. Any one of the Republicans is better than one of those Democrats. Uh, but... but there have been things that have gone on in the last 20 years that, you know, I'm just not comfortable as a Republican. You first expressed some interest in becoming and uh, running for the Senate back in July. What kind of conversations did you have with people? 
particularly your constituents, obviously, who've encouraged you to do this. Absolutely. A lot, you know, a lot of support from people, like, you know, obviously my family, but ar around the state, a lot of telephone calls, a lot of talking. You know, we, we got put a little behind with the storm, so, so we worked through that, and I, I wish I was a little bit further along, but now we're starting to uh, go to the town committees, talk to them. I've done all the phone calls. You know, I, I, I've had a lot of support from a lot of different people. They understand that some of the things that we've done in town uh, translate to the state and to the national level. Um, because you know, I've told people what I'm go what I'm going to do, why I'm going to do it, and we've implemented it. It hasn't just been lip service; it's been real practical experience. You are fairly close to the GOP nominee for governor last year, uh, Tom Foley. What kind of advice has he given you? Um, you know, Tom and I had talked. You know, right now some of the focus is fundraising. You know, Tom's been pretty supportive in terms of his. Uh, uh, discussions with me uh, about policy. I mean, we, you know, one of the things that we did talk about that really I think is a huge problem. We talked about the uh, gross domestic product is e uh, equaling the national debt and how that's a problem, and that um, you know that is one of the things that has, in a lot of ways, caused the currency to be devalued. Uh, it's made it diff more difficult for businesses to, uh, you know have the environment where they're going to hire more people because there's a lot of uncertainty out there. Our currency is devalued. Uh, you know, we have foreign nations stockpiling our, our, our currency, you know, and it's affected, affected us. You know, Tom is great in terms of, uh, of uh, policy and economics. How do, you, how do you see a debate between Mrs. McMahon, Mr. Shays, and you, and of course Brian Cahill also in the race? How do you see that going? Well, I would assume I'd probably win. <laughs> <laughs> Jason McCoy, the mayor of Vernon, best of luck in your campaign for the U.S. Senate. Later in the broadcast, President Kennedy.